You know, I've been through little injuries, and that's just part of the game. Things could always be worse. Broke my foot, had to have a surgery. Uh, the surgery didn't go that well the first time, so I had to have another one. Missed a whole last year. New coaching staff coming in, so you gotta gotta restart. Show everybody who you are again, which is not a bad thing, but you just gotta prove it every day. You gotta prove to them that I came here for a reason. With CJ, I just wanted to make sure that he had the foundation, he had the structure, and he knew what was right and what was wrong. Myself and my, my wife, we just made sure we just showed him the values of life. You know, showing him how to treat people, showing him how if things kind of go a little bad, to still how to keep that even steady pace. I always have liked structure when I, when I was little growing up. And the military, it sets the, the foundation. The military, to me, was a no-brainer. So, but I juggled a lot of things with the military, and I juggled uh, going to college as well. And it, it kind of set the foundation of what I wanted my family to be. If something happens, or if I mess up, or if I have a learning curve, he'll just bring whatever he needs, military, sports, and it kind of like helped me with structure. You gotta be there when someone wants you there. You gotta be dependable. People gotta trust you. Cause that's the best structure besides sports in my opinion. The military, they have great structure on how they wanna do stuff and the right ways to do it. The things that I've shared with CJ though is only kinda on the selective side, only stuff that if he acts or if it's something that I need to bring his attention to, and then I can kinda use my military experience and guide him the right way. I've been to three wars. I've been to Iraq. I've been to Afghanistan twice. We was all strapped in the airplane and we all had our guns cocked and loaded. And soon as we got to Iraq and they just told us to get off the plane, head east, head east, head east, and, and be ready to roll. He was giving me a haircut and he kind of referenced what I did in school to one of his military experiences. Basically, you gotta be dependable and you never know what's gonna happen. The story is him and his best friend in the military, the truck they were driving ran out of gas. You don't want to leave no traces in the military. So when that happens, you have to leave no evidence. So that's what he did. They blew up the truck, whatever, and they started walking in the direction that they were supposed to go into. In Afghanistan, it's all desert. Everything looks kind of the same. Next thing you know, they heard the enemies. Basically, they had to fight for their lives. He had a big scar on his knee from a knife that the guy stabbed him through his knee, so he really couldn't walk that well. After the fight was over, some more guys came. This time, it happened to be friends, everybody that was from America. After all this stuff happened, he was with that unit for a while, and he found out through all this stuff that he was reported dead. Him and his best friend were reported dead because of the truck that they left behind. When it was time to go home, they couldn't get in contact because of whatever, all the signals or whatever was going on back then. My papa and my uh, grandmother, they got a little note saying that their son's dead. So when he came back home, it's like a crazy moment. People were crying, people, you know, obviously tears. You go back home, people think you're dead, and you're like, no, I'm right here, I'm good, you know. Kind of talk about it here and there whenever something crazy happens or if I need some type of guidance or reassurance from injuries to I, everything. Every, everything that I go through, I think it could always be worse. His service means to me is everything. He risked his life so I and the people around me could live a better life. That's the entire point that he made when he was when he told me. He said, yeah, this is what I did, and this is what I learned. After a while, you understand when you grow up, people do things for other people at times. And that just helped me grow as a person and understand that things are bigger than yourself. I had him involved in sports for a while, you know, to get more structure, to set a, a foundation for him. Uh, you have deadlines you gotta meet. You have to get up early. You have to, uh, there's stuff, attention to detail. In the military versus structure as a football or student athlete, it's kind of the same. And that's what CJ striving. He put me in all the sports that I wanted to try, wanted to learn and to see which one I like better and let me make my own decision. If it was baseball like he did, if it was football like he did, if it was what I wanted to do. My mom played basketball, so it was kind of like they wanted me to, and I wanted it too, I wanted to be around people. Like I didn't have brothers and sisters, so I was around sports. I remember when he was like three or four, 
and we always used to throw baseball. And the baseball w was kind of easy for him, you know, because I kind of showed him how to, you know, throw a ball, how to hit a ball early. And he was kind of good at it, but he was just running around and just being, you know, a little kid. But at the same time, I said, hmm, it's something about him that he really liked this sport. When we used to play baseball all the time there, CJ would always look glance over there at the football. And I was saying, CJ, no, you're not ready for football yet. We're not going to play football until you get about, you know, 12, 13, and then you can start playing football. So he, he just started playing when he was in the fifth grade. And, you know, he haven't looked back since then. When we lived in Nashville, we used to go to a private school. There used to be a, a guy used to drive up all the time in Porsches. CJ always trying to figure out who he was and come to find out it was Derek Mason. It was crazy. You're like, Derek Mason's right here. You like, he just caught a pass. You seen the guy on Sunday on your TV and then Friday at the field trip, he's right next to you. We talked at a field trip, we were bowling and he was talking about Michigan State and playing receiver. And I was like, Michigan State? We're like, okay, cool. I mean, that sounds, I wanted to. He was like the guy. So I was like, all right, Derek Mason said, this is a good place. Let's look into it. Let's see what it's talking about. That's how he became a Michigan State fan. And from then on out, that's the school he has always wanted to go to. At first, I thought it was going to be really hard. New coaching staff, I wanted to prove right then and there that I can play, I can do this, I can do this. Coach Tuck shook my hand, gave me a hug. I was in a boot. He didn't know who I was. So I thought it was going to be like, wow, I got to fight for everything all over again. I got to show him who I am. And he helped me out in so many ways. When I was hurt, I was like wondering, what could I do to help somebody? What could I do to help the freshman that doesn't know to play or how to watch film or something? It could always be worse. So how could I use this experience that I'm going through right now? How could I use this to help someone else besides myself? But well, that's what I did. I, I took the year, I learned all the plays, I tried to learn all the plays, do everything I possibly can so when my time comes, you ready. That's just, that's just how I was raised.